Hello, uh, my name is Michael Isaacman. I'm a PhD student in chemistry here at UCSB. And I want to tell you a little bit about the course I'm going to be teaching this fall, which is entitled Nanotechnology Using the Very Small to Solve the World's Big Problems. So what exactly is nano? Uh, nano is a prefix uh, from the Greek word meaning dwarf. It describes matter on a scale that is one billionth of a meter. That's an extremely small amount. So let's try to rationalize what that really means. So how small is the nano world? Well, if you look at something like a single walled carbon nanotube, which is one nanometer in diameter, if you were to multiply that by 100,000, you would get the diameter of a width, uh, I'm sorry, the diameter of a strand of hair. If you were to go ahead and multiply that by 100,000, you would get the width of a house. Another example is a nanoparticle, which is four nanometers in diameter. If you multiply that by one million, you would get the size of an ant. And it would take one million ants to line the track of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So in an analogy, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, who's a pretty big guy to begin with, he's over two billion nanometers tall, which is a huge number. Another way to look at it, uh, comparing meters to nanometers is like comparing the size of the Earth to the size of a marble. So now that we know how small these things are, let's see what they can do. Uh, so nanotechnology is all around us today. It's a te technology that allows for water repellent pants or flat screen TVs. And nanotechnology is even found in cosmetics that everyone uses today. Uh, so what exactly is nanotechnology? Well, it's, uh, nanotech is controlling matter on an atomic and molecular scale. Uh, now, one of the first ways that this was done is back in the late 80s. And if you look at the image on the left, that's something called a cantilever. Now, the tip of a cantilever is actually only a few atoms wide. Now, uh, scientists at IBM used that a few decades ago. And they were able to move single atoms of xenon and arrange them in such a way to be able to spill out the, spell out the letters IBM. And that's an amazing accomplishment. And that really is what started the whole nanotech craze. And there was a lot of development from then to now, and there will be in the future. And this is what we're going to be talking about during this course. So one area that we're going to talk about is something that I personally do in the lab. It's called site-specific drug delivery. Now, the idea behind this is to improve on current treatments like chemotherapy for cancer. Now, the way that that works today is patients are injected with a drug that kills cells. Now, these cells preferentially will kill cancer cells, but they will also kill healthy cells as well which results in side effects like hair loss and people getting very sick. So we're trying to improve on that. And the way that we're trying to do that is, if you can imagine taking a drug, which is that uh, blue shape, and, surround and putting it in something called a nanocapsule, which is about 100 nanometers wide. Now, if this nanocapsule can specifically target a cancer cell, where it would really preferentially be absorbed by tumor cells and not healthy cells, then we could get that drug enclosed in a nanocapsule into that cell that we want. And we can use an outside source, such as light, to activate it, which would then destroy the nanocapsule and release the, the drug specifically into the cell that we want to kill while leaving healthy cells unharmed. Uh, so some of the other things that we're going to be talking about in this course is we're going to break down how your iPhone works, all the nanotechnology that lets that be, be possible and also some future applications of nanotechnology and some sci-fi gadgets that maybe in the future will be possible. Another thing we're going to discuss is nanotechnology and green energy, how we can better use the sun, for instance, to uh, power everything that we use today. Uh, we're also going to be talking about hydrogen fuel cells, which take hydrogen and oxygen to create energy, with the only byproduct being water. And that's also something that's based on nanotechnology. Uh, nanotechnology and material science is something that's really cool also. So if you look, we have a gecko foot up there. And the, basically, the technology behind or the science behind what allows a gecko to climb up, let's say, a glass wall is based on interactions that happen on the nanoscale between the gecko's foot and the wall itself. And that has applications in things like surface adhesives, uh, things like that. Also, uh, nanotechnology is behind something like a bulletproof vest or bulletproof uh, armor that's on a tank or an aircraft. Also, we have something here called quantum dots that uses nanotechnology and things like cosmetics and also other fluorescent applications. Uh, so nanotechnology is a really diverse subject. And if you're interested in things like physics, engineering, chemistry, 
or biology, I think that you would really enjoy this course.